by the end of it. Today on the show, we have Rhode Island local entertainer, singer-songwriter, Justina Viveros. We got actor, professional uh, champion, Teddy Beams. And we got a few more surprise guests for you on the way. <laughs> We're gonna start by having a little discussion. And I'm gonna start that discussion with a question. Justina, talk to us a little bit about the Rhode Island music scene, what you're doing, what you're trying to get going on in music. The Rhode Island music scene is hopping right now. There's a bunch of new artists coming out. You know, I'm hoping to be one of them. Could have fooled me. The Rhode Island music scene looks like a toilet to me. Well, it's swirling around quite a bit. Getting some action in there. Yeah. All the pieces of shit, turds floating around. Some of them getting sucked down, some of them getting smeared on the bowl. If the world was perfect and you woke up tomorrow and you, you had a chance and you had a, a chance to do anything you wanted, what would it sound like? Well, it would probably be a lot of Queen going on, I think. What, as a soundtrack to your my life? The entire day would be Queen, I think. Okay. <laughs> Interesting answer. It's like what song from Queen? My dad looks like Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Well, there you go. 
I like, um, I like Bohemian Rhapsody. I think that would start off my day. My dad likes Queen so much, but he's homophobic, so when you tell him that Freddie Mercury was gay, he denies it, and my dad says, no, he got AIDS from drug use. But everybody knows Freddie Mercury got AIDS from banging dudes. No, I think it was a blood transfusion. Was that it? Yeah, at least oh, that's what my dad told me. So I can still like Queen then? It's still cool to like him. Well, it's not cool to like him, it's just cool to love him. <laughs> Tonight, we're very excited to bring you Justina Viveros, American Idol Season 5 finalist. Christina, um, we just saw, heard a beautiful song from you. Mm, was what was the title of that song, by the way? That was called Apology. Apology? What's that about? Well, it's an apology in a song. Was there someone in mind when you were writing it? Was it your boyfriend that oh, hit yes. you? No, no, it oh. was just some guy. But I felt bad. You know, that happens. It tends so it to happen from time to time. It was your apology to him. It was. It was my apology to him. And also on today's show, you'll be glad to know, we have Teddy Beam, Rhode Island Wonder Kid, who's known for his acting skills and ability to act and uh, be a talent. And he's auditioning. We're going to try to give him a role, get him a role in uh, MTV's Real World. My name is Buttermilk, and I'm here for your pleasure. How'd that feel? I've always hated everyone that I work with. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to get off work 35 minutes before everyone else leaves. I will park in the center of the parking lot. One by one, as my coworkers arrive, I will shoot them in the back of the head and leave their bodies hanging halfway out of their cars. I strongly believe that I will be able to kill 15 of 40 of my coworkers, where I will then speed away and have a good last meal. Tap into something. Uh, did you tap into something that all actors tap into, which is emotion? 
A little bit there. Would you say that I'm a pretty good director? I got always motivated. Okay. I felt the motion of the last one. Let's keep it moving. You're a football player and you're coming out of the closet to your team. No, that's you. You're a football player and you're coming out of the closet to your team. We can get Teddy, Teddy Beans on MTV's Real World. Now, Teddy, why don't you talk to us a little bit about your acting career? What have you, are you, did you grow up in the theater? Uh, my sister was a big actress. Now, Teddy, tell us something else. You're young, you live in Rhode Island, you're big in the acting scene. What do you do when you're around town, when you're not shooting video, or you're not you know, soliciting uh, you know, the next big thing for your career? What are you doing? Uh, what do you do for fun? Uh, I go to the bar. Uh, you're, you got the look, and you really, really, um, you know, of all the applicants that we had to, to come out here today, uh, you had the best look, so I'm sure um, life is pretty easy on that side of the, the yeah. block. Yeah, it's like driving on glass. Tell it's, me about it's it. It's pretty good. Driving on glass, I never heard that before. Yeah. Now you did? Nice. Like this, okay? You're telling your kid you want him, you want him to eat more raw meat. I'm your father, and I want you to eat more raw meat. I'm sorry that I got caught looking at bad stuff on the computer. I didn't know it wasn't hurting anyone. Show the president. Say that again. I like that detail. Adding details is what's gonna get you the big jobs, the big gigs in Hollywood. Because when you're on a set, when it's do or die, and you need to add to your character depth and really let him know, he's from another town, he doesn't go to school with us, so you don't know him, but I know him with my heart, and I love him. Keep going. I really could kill everyone in a movie theater with the gun I just bought. Once a movie goes black, you know, right in the beginning? Then I stand in quickly open fire from the top row, looking and isolating back and forth as long as I can see heads. I will continue to shoot through the seat backs, and I think I can still take them down. No one cares about me for some trite, dumb shit reason. Down to hell. Let's do that one more time and look into the camera when you do it and really make them believe that you're gonna kill a movie theater full of people with the gun you just bought. <laughs> He's got a sort of a clean cut bad boy thing going on. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he will when we're done with him. That's it. Here at Tissue Box, Rhode Island's entertainment show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, special surprise announcement coming in from Rhode Island is bodybuilder Rich Wasserman. Let's get the fog machine going. Wait, don't come on yet. Hold on. Get the. Here's a sensual song for warming up that beautiful body of yours. Now take a big breath and stretch those arms over your head. And it over to the floor. Don't worry about him. He's not even here, just ignore him. He'll go away. All right, so Rich, you're bodybuilding. Let's talk, let's shoot the breeze. Let's get into it, let's, let's get talk bodybuilding. You don't mind. Um, now you are uh, a, a, a bodybuilder. Yes. Correct, okay. Um, so, so how long have you been in, in the bodybuilding? About five years, continue about three. As I'm looking at this bead of uh, fake tanner dripping down your abs, I also noticed you have rockabilly tattoos. I do. I do. Holy shit, wow. folks. Yeah. Ladies do. and gentlemen. Rockabilly is fucking huge! Candy skulls. 
Mustache on the finger tattoo? Yes. What? <laughs> it's like killing <laughs> can over here. Our, our floor manager's ex-girlfriend, psychopath woman. Don't date her, Caitlin can. If you hear the name, she's serious. It means danger, run away. Anywho. And I'm talking about bad haircuts. I saw that Facebook photo of her, and that is a bad fucking haircut. That looks like you if you had a, an emo haircut. I did for a long time. I, you could have passed as her back in your emo face. I mean, maybe. Um, Tell me, what kind of preparation goes into um, an event? Like, like, say you have an upcoming event. Uh, when, bodybuilding. In, in, in bodybuilding. When, when is your, what is the preparation that typically goes into a show? Well, typically, you have an off-season and an on-season. And the off-season is time to grow and to kind of consume a tremendous amount of calories. You eat about six or seven times a day. You take over 5,000 calories in a day. Okay. And then about between 12 to 16 weeks out, the, the harsh dieting starts. And that's essentially removing all your carbohydrates from your diet, um, starting your cardio, which is like two hours a day. The, the training stays the same. You actually over two hours a day. It's like watching paint dry. It's like watching paint dry. What does um? What is what what does um? I'd rather do ball torture for two hours a day. It's about the same. I, it's, Let's be honest now. Where it comes in is eating. Eating is where it's at. People believe that you take a magic pill and you get big. It's not like that. It's like anything. You have to practice to be a professional. So you really need to eat. At the end of the day, the supplements are like the gasoline on the fire. It just gets you there, that extra yard. But truly, it's the food. That's got to be pricey given the price of uh, food these days. Food prices are skyrocketing. Um, the country is in peril. We're, in a, we're about to be in a food war. And I'll be honest with you, Rich. Monsanto. Tissue box is sponsored by Monsanto. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to be a bodybuilder. I'm sure it's fine. It probably does a, a killer in your wallet. The supplements aren't cheap. And the food to get that way, I'm sure, isn't cheap as well. Is you're, it? you're right. It's, it's, I mean, I go through... Um, uh, 12 egg whites for breakfast. I'll go through probably about three and a half pounds of chicken during the day. I'll go through about maybe 45, 48 ounces of broccoli. Um, I'll go through it's fucking raw, dude. It's a lot. It's, it's a raw. Lot. You have to cook it. You cook it. It's a lot of food. Raw, steak, like raw steak, dog. steak. You have to fillet, so it's expensive. And, yeah. the, and the supplements, the protein, the, the vitamins, it's, it's extremely expensive. I mean, Jesus it's, Christ. It's, take some supplements, man. You'll be all right. <laughs> Now this is the bodybuilding question I wanted to, I was listening for the whole time because I know Charles is deep into supplements. He really is, and that's just not a joke. I'm not talking about weight gain. He doesn't, obviously he's not, you know, gaining, he's not hard gaining. No, not, not yet. Not yet. I'm off season right now. But Charles is real into alternative and homeopathic medicines. He knows that the, the American uh, medical system is a total hoax. And he's, he's, he's helping himself out to give a see. So let's talk supplements. Right. If you had to give a good rundown to the average person, or better yet, what do you take? The supplements, well, I gotta say, people think that, you know, every girl takes steroids, which we do, but that's not really where it comes down. Uh oh. It's okay. But I say we don't really go out at night. A lot of our friends go out and drink, so what they spend at the bar, we spend at the uh, well, you gym. You wanna go pro with bodybuilding, there's no time for drinking anymore, at least no. No, you can't drink, you can't drink, can't smoke. It's, it's the most no unforgiving, no, it's the most unforgiving sport. If you smoked? Yeah. It lowers your testosterone. Alcohol and, and, and cigarettes lower your testosterone. What about marijuana? That's that, what's happening. That lowers it too. You really, you really need to focus, you know, 16 weeks on, on real clean living, and then. Uh, so that's why Nick, it's, Nick has low T. That's it's, why. Taking this pill for low T. Figured it out. Nick's got low T. It's all the same. Milling my testosterone down until I'm, until I'm black swan. Fuck. some round robin questions now. No shame in screaming. These are no shame in screaming questions. This is a tissue box only, exclusive tissue box segment. We're gonna do some hard hitting questions. Are you ready? My panel of answerers, are you ready for the hard hitting questions right now? All right, I'm gonna begin. Hard hitting questions, here we go. Rich, can we see your dick? What are you, a pecker checker? Exclusive, Victor, tell me, sexual fetishes, got any? I want to fuck you in your ass. Any more questions? Hey everybody, uh, as you can tell, things are going real smoothly. So we're gonna take a break, because how smoothly they're going, we'll be right back. Fresh and good. Waking up in the morning, if nothing you do 
is memorable? Is it worth getting up out of bed and going to work if you'd rather die than go to work? As the United States sunk into an oily depression that was of a truly unprecedented magnitude, the masses were left hopeless and helpless. Fully nude in a world that they had created for themselves, suffocated by the structures that lifted them so high, undone by the devices of their own modernity. You going to college? You gonna be a big college boy? Oh, I'm so proud of my son, he's going to college. Today's his big first day in college. He's going to college, he's gonna make the family proud. He's gonna do do do. Look, you're living somebody else's life. Take that plan, crumple it up, and um, you can, uh, you can like, uh, on eBay they sell like vending machine stuff. You can get like a, a hundred, um, I'm fucking broke, man. I'm fucking flat broke. I got nothing. I got no fucking money, man. I got no money. I can't pay nobody. I haven't paid my bills in fucking forever, man. I'm a fucking piece of shit. Reeples. You can get like these little toys and you can go around and put, you can like, uh, uh, you can set up vending machines basically. And it's a really good deal. Um, send me an email, alienmode at gmail.com. I'm gonna set you up with the package uh, that you need uh, to get started in the in this world of vending. It's listen, I'm telling you, it's gonna blow the doors off of what you were doing before. Nobody is into this. Nobody knows about vending machines. It's literally America's top growing segment of uh, you know business. It's it's for your benefit. It's not for my benefit. I already made my money. The bar was too high. Success stories of the past. The American dream. It was all impossibly out of reach. The mob's mad dash to the bottom was underlined and punctuated by fantastic displays of savagery. Kindness and human dignity gave way to the endless black void. Nobody had any money, and there were no profits or sales. A graph with a big downward pointing red arrow. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm working on plan A, but if plan A doesn't end up coming through, I will gladly settle for Plan S, because I am positive that Plan S is always willing and waiting for me, anytime I choose to find it. We're all in it together now, in the grinder. No one is left out of the mix. Confusing and painful sex, painful emotionally and physically. Maximum output of pornographic material bred a societal pack of hyenas that took off and took the sanctity of sexual intercourse with it, chewed it up and processed it, making it the next thing in a long line of easily digestible solids. There is so much sex stuff these days, and a lot of it is really bad. The new era of slot is here! The new era of the biggest sluts you've ever seen are here! You've never seen sluts like this with numbers like these! These are the highest numbers that make you the sickest, the dad crushers. The man you turn to for advice is a fellow felon, a nameless and faceless walking moral desert who has already stomped out the last of his own self-respect like it never mattered. The propulsion of driving domestic output forward just dried up one day, went up in a puff of smoke, unceremoniously like a Cadillac with 80,000 miles on the motor leaving millions tired and defeated. Let me ask you a question. What do you do to relax? Is it worth going to a dance party club, dancing the night away, if the odds are high, that you'll end up getting set on fire and tossed in the garbage? Or worse? Every last ounce of strength was spent blocking out the words. You don't think it adds up? You don't think you can do the math? I bet you could. You won't like the answer. The words they so wished would just leave them alone. You're losing. You're a loser. And you lost. Finally, you gave up, America. You gave up. And Jesus gave up on you. Bye, world.
I'd buy fucking anything. I'm big and fat and salty and white and I am worthless. Good for nothing to nobody anywhere. So folks, if you go to uh, Infowars.com, if you smoke a lot of weed, you go to Infowars.com, you get into a little paranoid, uh, you know, mind freakout stage, um, or if you're just, you know, an educated uh, person, you will know that they just passed a law called the National Defense Authorization Act uh, that basically says you can go to prison whenever they want, which is fine, understandable. They have to combat terrorism, all right? We're at a dire time in our nation's history. Um, but what this means is, Essentially, your likelihood now of going to prison is much higher. And it's with that in mind that we bring you tonight's top 10 things you don't want to hear when you first get to prison. Number 10. That's him! That's the baby raper! Number 9. Ain't no such thing as autism in the can, motherfucker. Number 8. Hey, it's movie night tonight, guys. Don't worry. We're not watching none of them. Faggy movies. We're watching Blue Velvet. <laughs> Number five. You know you might be a redneck when there's a <laughs> Number three. So tell me, where would you like me to forcibly place your swastika tattoo? Don't worry, the needle's totally safe. It's my toothbrush motor attached to a coil from my old prison cot. Number two, Shrek 4, coming soon. And folks, the number one thing you don't want to hear on your first day of prison is Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith. So that's it, folks. That's all you get. That's the top ten right there. Coming up next, we have Michael Jackson himself, risen from the dead for one final performance for all you fine folks at home. And I guarantee it's gonna be a doozy. 